Now, we all know how social media amplifies this whole envy problem. Everyone's a star. Everyone shows you their dream life, dream body, dream partner, dream success, dreams. What's really going on is that people are acting out their own projections of envy. The internet has made it possible to go another step further into the delusion that befalls us if we don't work on our projections. Instead of suffering jealousy of those lucky people with perfect lives, we can pretend we are those people. (laughs) The right angle shot, a bit of Photoshop, and presto, I'm living the dream, as in not the reality. (laughs) I know I'm only talking about a specific subset of folks, but it's a symptom of a larger problem, namely that we look outside ourselves far too much. We look at others for how we're supposed to be instead of looking within. Our projections hook us to the outer world and make us abandon our inner processes. The way to begin to reverse this is by taking back your projections. If you envy someone for something, use it as a catalyst to discover this quality in yourself. See your envy as a meaningful and purposeful process, not as a pathology. Relate to it as your teacher and guide that's here to show you the way. Here's an interesting envy process I went through. Back in high school, when I was just starting to really get into guitar, I'd study other guitar players to get ideas. Every day I discovered something new on the fretboard. I never felt jealous of the more advanced players, just grateful I could learn from them. Then one day I was at a jam session at a friend's house, and this guitarist dude I'd never met before joined in. He closed his eyes, started playing, and blew the roof off. Normally, I would have been ecstatic to play with someone like that. But for some unknown reason, I got in a complex. I felt like the shittiest musician alive. (laughs) I told myself to chill. I'm just learning, I said to myself. Why should I be awesome before I'm awesome? It takes time. But my self-talk didn't make me feel better. Then that night, I dreamed about this guy. Ah, you again. But it was a really interesting dream. We were at a concert together, and I was commenting on how great the guitar player was. The dude turns to me and says, It's not about the guitar, it's about me. Then, in typical weird dream fashion, he's suddenly gone, and I'm him. As him, all I care about is being true to myself, following my true spirit. I don't care about the high school cliques, or being popular, or anything else. I don't even care about the guitar. It's just something I do. That was the end of the dream. Now, I hadn't studied psychology yet and didn't know how to work with dreams, but I was interested in them, and this one seemed to speak to me directly. Without fully understanding, I intuitively got that my jealousy of him was misplaced, and that really what I liked about him when I watched him play guitar was how he seemed totally immersed in his own world, instead of like a lot of folks who are very focused on their image. The way he closed his eyes, went internal, and expressed himself from such a deep place represented this same capacity in myself. I just hadn't been aware of it or developed it yet. I realized my complex had nothing to do with his guitar playing, and after thinking about the dream, I felt better. It was a small turning point for me at that time. I got more truthful with myself about who I liked and didn't like at school, what I was really interested in, and where I wanted to go in life. I continued to study guitar, but also got into studying myself. And eventually, it all came back full circle when I realized how much studying myself had helped my guitar playing and vice versa. Okay, a bit of Dr. Zwig history there. 